Hi, hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good day, good night. How are you? Should we have a bit more of Wintersmith by Terry Pratchett? So last night we just met Horace. Horace was a cheese and a little bit of an aggressive cheese at that. So yeah, that's where we left it last night. But if you remember, we started getting a little bit of an inkling that Tiffany might have been a bit smitten with the wintersmith. Hmm. Like I said, as the father of a teenage daughter, I have a sense for this sort of thing. So that's where we left it last night. And I believe she was just about to go upstairs to her diary. Hmm. Let's pick it up from there, shall we? Tiffany's diary was three inches thick. Anna Grammer, another local trainee witch and one of her friends, more or less, said that she should really call it her Book of Shadows and write it on vellum using one of the special magical inks sold at Zack Zack Strong in the Arms Magical Emporium at popular prices. At least prices that were popular with Zack Zack. We met him, didn't we, in the last one of these. Do you remember? Tiffany couldn't afford one. You could only trade witchcraft. You weren't supposed to sell witchcraft. Miss Treason didn't mind her selling cheeses, but even so, paper was expensive up here, and the wandering peddlers never had very much to sell. They usually had an ounce or two of green copperas, though, which could make a decent ink if you mixed it and crushed oak gulls or green walnut shells. The diary was now as thick as a brick with extra pages that Tiffany had glued in. She worked out she could make it last two more years if she wrote small enough. On the leather co cover she had, with a hot skewer, drawn the word, Feagles keep out. It had never worked. They looked upon that sort of thing as an invitation. She wrote parts of the diary in code these days. Reading didn't come naturally to the Chalk Hill Feagle, so surely they'd never get the hang of a code. She looked around carefully in any case and unlocked the huge padlock that secured a chain around the book. She turned to today's date, dipped her pen in the ink and wrote, Met T. Snowflake. We know what that means, don't we? Met the Wintersmith. <laughs> yes, a snowflake would be a good code for the Wintersmith. He just stood there, she thought, and he ran away because I screamed. Which is a good thing, obviously, but oh, I wish I hadn't screamed. She opened her hand. The image of the horse was still there, as white as chalk, but there wasn't any pain whatsoever. Tiffany gave a little shiver and pulled herself together. So she'd met the spirit of the winter. She was a witch. It was the sort of thing that sometimes happened. He'd politely given her back what was hers, and then he'd gone again. There was no call to get soppy about it. There were things to get done. She wrote, Litter from Ur. I'm guessing that's Roland. She very carefully opened the letter from Roland, which was easy because slug slime isn't much of a glue. With any luck, she could even reuse the envelope. Yeah, imagine licking that afterwards. Eh? <laughs> she hunched over the letter so that no one could read it over her shoulder. Finally, she said, Miss Treason, will you get out of my face, please? I need to use my eyeballs privately. <laughs> there was a pause, and then a mutter from downstairs, and the tickling behind her eyes went away. Poor old Tiffers. She, <laughs> she's got to keep her guard up, hasn't she? It was always good to get a letter from Roland. Yes, they were often about the sheep and other things of the chalk, and sometimes there'd be a dried flower inside, a harebell or a cowslip. Granny Aiken would not have approved of that. She always said that if the hills wanted people to pick the flowers, they would have grown more of them. The letters always made her quite homesick. One day, Miss Treason had said, This young man of yours who writes to you, is he your beau? Tiffany had changed the subject until she had time to look up the word in a dictionary and stop blushing. Roland was... Well, the thing about Roland was... The main thing about... Well, the point was... He was there. Okay, when she'd first really met him, he'd been a rather useless, rather stupid lump. But what could you expect? He'd been the prisoner of the Queen for the fairies for her year, for a year to start with. Fat as butter and half crazy on sugar and despair. Besides, 
He'd been brought up by a couple of haughty aunts, his father, the Baron, being mostly more interested in horses and dogs. He'd more or less changed since then, more thoughtful, less rowdy, more serious, less stupid. He'd also had to wear glasses, the first ever seen on the chalk. And he had a library, more than a hundred books. Actually, it belonged to the castle, but no one else seemed interested in it. Some of those books were huge and ancient, with wooden covers and huge black letters and coloured pictures of strange animals and far-off places. There was Waspmeyer's Book of Unusual Days, Crumbery's Why Things Are Not Otherwise, and all but one volume of the ominous encyclopaedia. Roland had been astonished to find that Tiffany could read foreign words, and she had been careful not to tell him it was all done with the help of what remained of Dr. Bustle. The thing was... The fact was, well, who else had they got? Roland couldn't, just couldn't, have friends among the village kids, what with him being the son of the Baron and everything. But Tiffany had the pointy hat now, and that counted for something. The people of the Chalk didn't like witches much, but she was Granny Aching's granddaughter, all right. No telling what she learned from the old girl up at the Shrepidon hut. And they do say she showed those witches up in the mountain what witching's all about, eh? Remember the lamb in last year? She pretty near brought dead lambs back to life just by looking at them. And she's an aching, and they've got these hills in their bones. She's all right. She's ours, you see. All that was fine, except that she didn't have any old friends anymore. Kids back home who'd been friendly were now respectful because of the hat. There was a kind of wall, as if she'd grown up and they hadn't. What could they talk about? She'd been to places they couldn't even imagine. Most of them hadn't even been to two shirts, which was only half a day away, and this didn't even worry them at all. They were going to do the jobs that their dads did, or raise children like their mums did, and that was fine, Tiffany added hurriedly to herself. But they hadn't decided. It was just happening to them, and they didn't even notice that. It was the same up in the mountains. The only people of her own age that she could actually talk to were other witches in training, like Anna Grammer and the rest of the girls. It was useless trying to have a real conversation with people in the villages, especially those boys. They just looked down and mumbled and shuffled their feet like people at home when they had to talk to the Baron. Actually, Roland did that too, and he went red every time she looked at him. Whenever she visited the castle or walked on the hills with him, the air was full of complicated silences, just like it had been with the wintersmith. She read the letter carefully, trying to ignore the grubby, feagle fingerprints all over it. He'd been kind enough to include several spare sheets of paper. She smoothed one out very carefully, stared at the wall for a while, and then began to write. Down in the scullery, footnote, a room off the kitchen for washing pans and doing other wet and messy chores. Although Miss Treason had skulls, she did not keep them in the scullery. It would have been quite amusing, though, if she did. Down in the scullery, Horace the Cheese had come out from behind the slop bucket. He was now in front of the back door. If a cheese ever looked thoughtful, Horace was looking thoughtful right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the tiny village of Two Shirts, the driver of the mail coach was having a bit of a problem. A lot of mail from the countryside around Two Shirts ended up at the souvenir shop here, which also acted as the post office. Usually, the driver just picked up the mailbag, but today there was a difficulty. He frantically turned over the pages of the book of the post office regulations. Miss Tick tapped her foot. This was getting on his nerves. Ah, ha, ha, said the coachman triumphantly. Says here, new animals, birds, dragons or fish. And which one do you think I am? Said Miss Tick icily. Ah, well, right. Well... Humankind is like animal, right? I mean, look at them monkeys, all right? I have no wish to look at monkeys, said Mystic. I have seen the sort of things monkeys do. The coachman clearly spotted that this was a road not to go down and turned the pages furiously. Then he beamed, Aha! How much do you weigh, miss? Two ounces said Mystic, which, by chance, is the maximum weight of letter that can be sent to the Lanker and near Hinterland area for ten pence. She pointed at the two scamp stamps gummed to her lapel. I have already purchased the stamps. You don't never weigh two ounces, 
said the coachman. You're hundred and twenty pound at least, Miss Tick sighed. <sighs> she wanted to avoid this, but Two Shirts wasn't dog bend after all. It lived on the highway, it watched the world go past. She reached up and pressed the button that worked her hat. <coughs> Would you like me to forget that you just said that to me? She said. Why? Said the coachman. There was a pause whilst Miss Tick stared blankly at him, then turned her eyes upwards. Excuse me, this keeps happening. It's the duckings, you know. Springs get rusty. She reached up and banged the side of her hat. The hidden pointy bit shut up, scattering paper flowers. The coachman's eyes followed it. Oh, he said. And the thing about pointy hats was this. The person under it was definitely a witch or wizard. Oh, someone wasn't... Oh, someone who wasn't could probably get a pointy hat and go out wearing it and they'd be fine right up until the moment they met a real pointy hat owner. Wizards and witches didn't like imposters. They also didn't like to be kept waiting. How much do I weigh now, pray tell me, she asked. You weigh two ounces, the coachman quickly replied. Miss Tick smiled. Yes, and not one scruple more. A scruple being, of course, a weight of 20 grains or 24th of an ounce. I am, in fact, unscrupulous. She waited to see if the extremely teachery joke was going to get a smile, but didn't mind when it didn't. Miss Tick rather liked being smarter than other people. She got on the coach. As the coach climbed up into the mountains, snow started to fall. Miss Tick, who knew that no two, two, no two snowflakes were alike, didn't pay them any attention. If she had done so, she would have felt slightly less smart. So the snowflakes were falling the same as each other. Hmm. I'm going to stop there tonight. A little bit shorter than usual at 12 minutes. But that's because we're nearly at the end of the chapter and I don't want to keep you for ages and ages. And I'm late uploading tonight. Gosh, devastating. All right. Okay. It's lovely to see you and I will see you again tomorrow to finish off this chapter. Bye bye.